Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It is good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. The House is debating whether to remove Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from her committee assignments. A vote is expected later this evening. On Wednesday, she avoided punishment from her own party over her extreme views, including endorsing political violence and anti-Semitic falsehoods. In a Republican conference meeting, she apologized for her past support for the QAnon conspiracy theory. But on the House floor earlier today, she did not publicly apologize for those beliefs. While wearing a mask that read free speech, Congresswoman Green did say she no longer held some of those extreme views. School shootings are absolutely real. And every child that has lost those families mourn it. I also want to tell you 9-11 absolutely happened. I remember that day crying all day long watching it on the news. And it's a tragedy for anyone to say it didn't happen. And so that I definitely want to tell you, I do not believe that it's fake. I never once said during my entire campaign, QAnon, I never once said any of the things that I am being accused of today during my campaign. I never said any of these things since I have been elected for Congress. These were words of the past, and these things do not represent me. They do not represent my district, and they do not represent my values. Meanwhile, Congresswoman Liz Cheney survived an effort to remove her from GOP party leadership. Some Republicans were angry over her vote to impeach former President Donald Trump. His trial in the Senate is set to start next week. And today, House impeachment managers wrote a letter to Mr. Trump requesting he testify under oath during those proceedings. His lawyer said he would not do it. While much of Washington focused on domestic issues Thursday, President Joe Biden centered his attention on foreign matters. He spoke at the State Department Thursday and addressed the importance of unity on a global stage, not just in America. We must meet the new moment accelerating global, accelerating global challenges, from the pandemic to the climate crisis to nuclear proliferation, challenging the will only to be solved by nations working together and in common. We can't do it alone. That must be Nancy Cordes, Rebecca Kaplan, and Tamara Keith join me now. Nancy is CBS News Chief White House Correspondent. Rebecca is CBS News Capitol Hill Producer. And Tamara is a White House Correspondent for NPR and co-host of the NPR Politics Podcast. Welcome to you all. Nancy, let me start with you. What changes did President Biden announce today when it comes to foreign policy? There were a lot of them, Elaine, starting with some big news on Yemen. He announced that he was going to be ending U.S. support for offensive operations in Yemen, including arms sales. And this was a reversal not just of Trump policy, but even in some ways of Obama policy. So that was very noticeable. Notable. Uh, beyond that, he said he's going to be signing an executive order on refugees to restore the refugee admission program in the United States with the goal of raising refugee admissions to 125,000 people in his first fiscal year in office. Another reversal from Trump policy. Something else he said that caught a, a lot of attention, he said he's freezing the drawdown of U.S. troops in Germany. You might remember that that's something that President Trump announced that took a lot of folks in the Pentagon by surprise. It took a lot of European allies by surprise. They really didn't like it. And now President Biden is announcing that he is uh, going to freeze those troop movements. He also announced he's going to be signing an executive order supporting LGBTQ individuals around the world. And he had some tough talk about Russia and China, saying that the U.S. is going to confront China's, quote, economic abuses. So uh, a very busy afternoon for the president at the State Department with a speech that got a lot of attention around the world, Elaine. And Tamara, President Biden also directly addressed State Department staffers. What was his message to them? His main message was America is back. That was a message to the world, but also a message to the State Department staffers that he is going to value diplomacy in a way that he argues President Trump didn't value diplomacy. And, and certainly, you know, the America first policies caused America to shrink from the world stage, uh, not having the same uh, role that it had previously as as a leader of 
uh, world ideas, uh, arguably. And so uh, what he was telling State Department staff is basically Joe Biden values what they do. Mm. On another topic, uh, CBS News video journalist Jesse Mitchell spoke with people in Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's district today. Here's what some of them said about the push to remove the Congresswoman from her committee assignments. Let's listen to that. She definitely needs to lay off that. Right. That rhetoric is just not productive. Uh, and for, for anybody our... to ever say that those school shootings were not, were, were, were pretend and were not anything real is yeah. absolutely unconscionable. It's just not okay. So far, I think she's representing as well. I think a lot of people have taken a lot of things that they say she says out of context, and perhaps she may not have actually said what's being said. I think people like to twist and turn words to suit their agenda. And I think she's basically asking all the right questions, which is what's making the people, other people in government nervous. So, Rebecca, can you remind us what exactly Congresswoman Green is accused of doing and supporting and why Democrats pushed to kick her off committee assignments? Well, Elaine, it's a long list uh, going back very early to the fact that she <clears throat> liked a social media post calling for people to put a, quote, bullet in the head of Speaker Pelosi. There were her support, past support of these